Hi, welcome to the second lesson in this series on physical and chemical change. Burning petrol and other fuels is one of the ways human activity causes change. Burning fuels changes the fuels themselves and the energy the burning provides enables us to change many things to make our lives more comfortable. In this lesson we are going to take a closer look at some changes involving the transfer of large quantities of energy. This is a piece of magnesium. Do you see its shiny, silvery color? Look at the magnesium as it burns. Do you see the flame? It is very bright because it is very hot. The air around the flame becomes very hot too. A large quantity of energy is transferred as light when magnesium burns. Look at all that smoke. Do you see that it is white? Look at what's left when the magnesium has finished burning. It doesn't look like magnesium now, does it? I'm sure that you'll agree that obvious signs tell us that large quantities of energy are transferred during this change. Certainly much more energy is transferred during this change than is transferred during the physical changes we talked about in lesson one. We call changes involving the transfer of large quantities of energy chemical changes. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to recognize that new substances form during chemical changes and explain that the formation of new substances involves the breaking and formation of chemical bonds. We use the large quantities of energy transferred during chemical changes to provide the energy we need in our everyday lives and we get most of the energy we need by burning fuels. Most of the fuels we use contain compounds called hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are compounds that are made up of different combinations of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. Petrol and diesel are examples of substances that contain mixtures of hydrocarbons. We burn coal to produce most of our electricity and coal contains many different hydrocarbons too. Burning is a chemical change during which a substance reacts with oxygen in the air. Candle wax is a fuel that we can burn safely to transfer energy as light. It is also a mixture of many different hydrocarbons. We are going to look at a burning candle to find out more about the large energy transfers in chemical changes. Let's cross to John in the lab to help us with this experiment. Hi there guys. Have a look at what's happening here. When I light the wick of a candle, the wax at the base of the wick starts to melt. The liquid wax creeps up the wick and reacts with the oxygen in the air on the surface of the candle. Here I have a cool dry glass beaker. I'm going to lower it over the candle. Watch and see what happens. The image of the flame is becoming blurred. The inside of the beaker is fogging up. Now the flame goes out. The inside of the beaker seems to be wet now. But is this wetness water? Watch what happens to the color of the white, gray, and hydrous copper sulfate when I add a drop of oil to it. Notice that it hasn't changed color. But when I add water, look, it goes blue. Water is the only substance that will turn anhydrous copper sulfate from its grey-white colour to blue. So let's test the inside of the beaker now. Look, the white and hydrous copper sulfate turned blue. This means that water must have formed when the candle wax reacted with the oxygen in the air. But where did the water come from? Well, we know that water is a compound of hydrogen and oxygen. We represent its molecules as H2O. The hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms in the water molecules cannot be created during burning because reactions such as this do not make atoms. The hydrogen in the water molecules must come from the hydrocarbon molecules in the candle wax. 
the oxygen in the water molecules must come from the oxygen in the air. What about the carbon atoms in the hydrocarbons of the candle wax? Where do they go to? They can't disappear. When the candle burns, we see only water. So any other product that forms must be invisible. It must be a gas. And this gas must contain the carbon from the hydrocarbon in the wax. Do you know a gas that contains carbon atoms in its molecules? That's right, carbon dioxide. We know that a candle won't burn in carbon dioxide. Perhaps that's why the candle flame went out earlier. Lime water turns milky when you bubble carbon dioxide through it. So let's watch as John tests the air around the candle to see if our hypothesis is true. Do you see that the lime water goes milky? This tells us that the gas carbon dioxide forms when the hydrocarbons in candle wax burn in oxygen. Burning changes candle wax into two new substances. We can show this using this word equation. Hydrocarbon in candle wax plus oxygen from the air gives water plus carbon dioxide. When candle wax burns, hydrocarbon molecules break up or decompose. Their atoms are rearranged to form completely different, simpler molecules. So, from our macroscopic observations of a chemical change, we can conclude that a chemical change that happens when any hydrocarbon fuel burns forms new substances, water and carbon dioxide, and involves the transfer of a large quantity of energy, a flame. This chemical change is very different from the physical changes we learned about in Lesson 1. During physical changes, molecules stay the same. Only their positions relative to each other change. In other words, they either move closer together or they move further apart. Next, we will take a microscopic look at our experiment to find out more about this chemical change. The wax making up our candle consists of a mixture of different hydrocarbons and a dye to colour it. The chemical formula for one of the hydrocarbons in the candle may be C19H40. The formula tells us that there are 59 different atoms in each molecule of this hydrocarbon. 19 of these are carbon atoms and 40 are hydrogen atoms. But this formula tells us nothing about how these 59 atoms join together in this molecule. Just like knowing that there are 27 bones in the human hand gives us no idea as to how the palm, five different fingers and wrist all join together. A structural formula gives us this extra information. This is the structural formula for a C19H40 molecule. It shows that the 19 carbon atoms are joined end to end to form a chain. The hydrogen atoms are not joined to each other, but rather each is joined to a carbon atom. What is the glue that sticks these 59 atoms together? What keeps these 59 atoms from going their own way? Chemists call the glue keeping two atoms together in a molecule a chemical bond. Glue is a substance, but a chemical bond has no substance. A chemical bond is an attractive electrostatic force between two atoms. Because chemical bonds keep atoms together in a molecule, we call them intramolecular forces. The prefix intra means on the inside or within. So intramolecular forces or chemical bonds are within molecules. Each line in the structural formula represents one chemical bond. If you count the number of carbon-carbon bonds in the molecule, you will see that there are 18 bonds joining 19 C atoms. How many carbon-hydrogen bonds are there in one molecule of C19H40? I hope you didn't count them one by one. A quick look at the formula shows that each C atom is joined to two hydrogen atoms, except the ones at the end. So 17 times 2 is 34. Each of the end carbon atoms is joined to the three hydrogen atoms. So 2 times 3 is 6. 34 plus 6 is 40. There are 40 carbon-hydrogen bonds in one C19H40 molecule.
The 40 carbon hydrogen bonds in each hydrocarbon molecule must be stretched until the bonds break. This frees the 40 hydrogen atoms to react with oxygen in the air to form 20 water molecules, 20 H2O in the flame. The 18 carbon-carbon bonds in each hydrocarbon molecule must also be stretched until the bonds break. This frees the 19 carbon atoms to react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide molecules. 19 of them in the flame. So our equation becomes C19H40 plus oxygen reacts to form 20H2O plus 19 CO2. The 20 oxygen atoms in the 20 water molecules come from the oxygen molecules in the air. The 38 oxygen atoms in the 19 carbon dioxide molecules also come from the oxygen molecules in the air. So the position of 20 plus 38 oxygen atoms changes drastically when we burn the candle. Instead of being free oxygen molecules in the air, 58 oxygen atoms combine with hydrogen atoms and with carbon atoms. 29 oxygen molecules for each wax molecule rearrange themselves in this way. Our equation now becomes C19H40 plus 29O2 react to form 20H2O plus 19CO2. Now, it takes energy to break chemical bonds in the same way that it takes energy to separate two things that are glued together. Energy must be transferred into each C19H40 molecule to break the bonds between the carbon and hydrogen atoms and the bonds between the carbon atoms. Energy must also be transferred into each O2 molecule to separate the oxygen atoms. But what about the bonds in the product molecules? Don't these bonds have to form two? Of course they do. The chemical change between wax and oxygen doesn't only involve the breaking of bonds, but the formation of bonds too. Look at the bonds in this list. Which of these bonds do you think form when candle wax reacts with oxygen in a candle flame? Did you identify the new bonds that form in the product molecules as HO in water and CO in carbon dioxide? Now if we transfer energy into molecules to break bonds, then surely energy is transferred out of molecules when bonds form. Of course, this is why we see a flame and why we feel hot air when our candle burns. Overall, more energy is transferred out of the product molecules into the air when new bonds form than is transferred into the reactant molecules to break bonds. We call such a chemical change an exothermic change. This is why we burn fuels. We burn them to get that extra energy to heat our homes, to give us light, to cook our food, to move our cars, buses, aeroplanes and so on. Our bodies burn fuels too, although fortunately without a flame. Intramolecular forces or chemical bonds are usually much stronger than intermolecular forces holding different molecules together. This is why chemical changes involve the transfer of much more energy than physical changes. Let's see if you can use these ideas for your task today. Here it is. Octane C8H18 burns in oxygen in motor car engines. Write an equation to represent this change. Is this a physical or a chemical change? Which involves more energy, the breaking of bonds in octane molecules or the formation of bonds in product molecules? Explain your decision. See you for our next lesson. Goodbye. Yeah.